Today on San Diego Living, new products to prevent your home from going up in flames. The number one cause of house fires. Bam, bam. extreme heat that we've been having and the very dry conditions in the Santa Ana's fires of course are on everybody's mind. We've got Bill McCauley the do-it-yourself expert who is bringing up the conversation of how to prevent fires in your home and if one does break out some safety things that we can do and have on tap to to put into place. Thanks so much for being here today. Oh, thank you for having us. This is Fire Awareness Month as you mentioned and this is particularly Fire Prevention Week. So we're trying to get the word out about how to create a safer environment and what to do if indeed the inevitable does come to be. Uh, my first suggestion to everyone is to have a plan. Just as surely as schools and offices have regular fire drills and have posted diagrams of the building where the primary and secondary means of aggress are located, do it for your own home. Everybody thinks they know where things are, but when that smoke is in the, and you wake up in the middle of the night, if you haven't drilled, there's people die from panicking. And if you've practiced and drilled, especially with small children, pets, and elderly in the home, a practice family will be a ready family. Wonderful. So you want to have that in place. You want to practice it over and over. And you want to make sure that you know which room you're going to all meet in. Right. Or more particularly, meet outside the dwelling. Wonderful. And the most important thing to do is to know when to exit the dwelling and when the fire is beyond your ability to put it out or control it yourself. That really is where so many people get into trouble, staying in the, the dwelling too long. Now, most fires in homes occur in two places. Overwhelmingly, the bedroom and the kitchen. We know kitchens are cooking fires, and we'll address that in a moment. But the bedroom, the chief culprits, are smoking materials and candles that are left unattended. My suggestion is if you do have, you insist on using these products, make sure your candles and your ashtrays have wide, stable, heavy bases, and they're not close enough. You brought not one here today. These are, these are electric candles. I brought a great alternative. Now, this is a battery-operated one. Uh, I can't even find the little button here. But again, when it's dark, that makes a nice, warm glow. We also have uh, plug-in electric candles. And again, many of these really do simulate and give you all the aesthetics of a candle without the danger element, without the flame. Another side, again, smoking materials in bed has still caused 1,000 deaths last year and $6 billion of damage. A great 21st century alternative would be to consider electric cigarettes. Again, uh, these are smoke-free. There is no flame needed to ignite them. Tar, no ash, no soot. And again, where there's no smoke, there's no fire. If you have any further questions about that, I'm not an expert on uh, smoking, but uh, greensmoke.com will fill you in. And I mention them only because for this month, they are, they are donating part of the proceeds to the Fallen Firefighters Fund, which is near and dear to my heart as a New Yorker, and I'm sure to many people, we all love our firefighters, so it's a great cause. You had mentioned that fortunately, uh, you haven't had a fire in your home, but in an apartment building in New York where you were living, not in your unit, but yes. in one in your building, there was a fire that got started. Very much so, and I had to vacate for a couple of weeks until the building was destroyed. My apartment was left unharmed, but I was able to escape by using a rope ladder, again, coming out my fourth story window, a sheer vertical rope ladder you can buy at any large home center. I brought a variation on the theme this morning. It's the same fire retardant material, but my home in Arizona, my bedroom empty, comes out, the window comes out over a slanted Spanish tile roof like you have around here. I simply have a knotted fire retardant cord so that we can more or less repel down the roof. The ladder is of no purpose when you're coming out onto a garage roof. So it's a simple low-tech variation on that same theme. Now, when we get to kitchens, um, we want to make sure, first off, we have working smoke detectors on all levels of your house and in every bedroom, and particularly the kitchen. And make sure you're, say, dual sensor. They now have both photoelectric and ionization capacities to pick up on fires much quicker. So you're going to be that much more ready. Make sure if yours are more than a couple of years old, you replace them. And do check those batteries twice a year. And we always talk about that with the daylight saving time. Exactly. That's why it coincides with October. Wonderful. We encourage that. And here's another great little new gadget. This is in the market. You go to the big box stores. You're checking the batteries. But some Sometimes it's the sensors that fail. This is a chemical smoke release. And you simply direct it at the uh, unit up on the ceiling or the wall, wherever it is. It emits a, a chemical simulated smoke. 
and now you're going to know is the sensor actually working along with the battery you inside. Know what? That is a fantastic device because right. sometimes you change the batteries, but you wonder is everything is else the working? the sensor still working? Are the contacts with the batteries valid when you live in a high humidity area? Check the contacts when you put those batteries back in because sometimes they will fail. But again, this is a great easy, you can get them at any big box home center. When you're in the kitchen, here's a great low-tech solution. Make sure you keep the lid to the pot you're cooking with. Too many times people, it starts to blow up and uh, you know, it's back in the cabinet and before they can get to it, the fire's already out. This is a great low-tech solution. Wonderful. Just want to mention while we have the fire safety checklist up there, of course, the fire escape plan you want to have. You want to make sure that your family is prepared. Besides checking the batteries in your fire alarm, you want to make sure that the smoke is uh, yeah, actually going to be Yeah, that the sensor the sensor will react, would react with, to, the to smoke. smoke. So again, without having to actually start a flame, yeah. <laughs> this is a great chemical yeah, do simulation. Way. Do right. We encourage no a flame. Safe simulation. Never leave a pot unattended on the stove. Never leave a fire in the open hearth unattended. That's what fireplace screens are for, and that's where the pot lid is the equivalent. That's the fireplace screen on your stovetop. Now, your fire extinguishers, there are many varieties on the market. I don't care which one you buy. But do make sure it indicates the A, B, C factor. Those are the three types of fires. A being paper, wood, trash. B being flammable liquid, C being electrical fires. This will cover a range of fires when you uh, deal with them. So make sure you have one in your kitchen, and I recommend, again, one on every level of the dwelling you live in. You don't want to have to go down two flights of stairs to go get that when it starts upstairs. Thank you so much, Bill. We are out of time, but a couple of websites that you wanted to mention. Yes, uh, if you want to come to my website, alwayssafefire.com or a national site, nfpa.org. That's the National Fire Prevention Association. They'll be happy to answer any questions I might not be able to. Perfect timing for our hot Santa Ana conditions. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank today. you for having us. Yeah. And please stay safe, everyone. We'll do it. More information, you can always go to our website at sandiego6.com and click on San Diego Living.